The Australian director Ray Argel went on tour to film Midnight Oil in 1984, a seminal year for this politically attuned, very successful hard rock group, when their lead singer Peter Garrett joined the Nuclear Disarmament Party and decided to stand for election to the Senate. Argel's film footage has been in storage for over 30 years and it's now emerged as a sort of time warp. The intensity of Garrett's performance is a sight to behold. But it seems the concerns of the mid-80s are not so different from our own now. This fly-on-the-wall doco with contemporary interviews with band members, notably drummer Rob Hurst and guitarist keyboard player Jim Mugini, and even stage manager Gary Morris, is an insight into a generation that were not politically engaged until Midnight Oil came along. We are about giving that audience everything that we had, everything that was happening on stage, we wanted to give to them in buckets. Well, the legacy of the band lives on through this film, written, directed and edited by our guest Ray Argel. Welcome to Screen, Ray. It's great mm -hmm. to have you. Thanks, Margaret. Why did all this material stay tucked in a drawer for so long? One of the main reasons is that Midnight Oil originally had wanted to have a concert film. I'd done a show in 1982 for the Capitol Theatre, um, which was a great concert movie, and that's what they'd wanted. Uh, but I said, look, why don't, instead of just shooting, you know, five multi-camera coverage for one, you know, night, I'll just, I'll come on tour and, and I'll shoot a different aspect every night and focus on a different part of the performance. And they said, oh, okay. And so I went along and I found so much more interesting <laughs> things to film, you know. <laughs> so I was filming backstage and, you know, all of the stuff going on and then Pete was running for the Senate. So I, I really picked up on that. So what, oca what, what occasioned you to actually bring the footage out to say, well, there's a documentary feature here? So originally, Midnight Oil weren't happy with the musical performances. So from their point of view, um, they were just going to sit on that, you know, and they basically shelved the music. You know, I think after 10 or 12 years, I went back to Gary Morris has a check, the manager, and said, are you, you know, what do you think? So it was only when digital technology came available and I could start looking at this material and transferring it about eight years ago, I started to work with the material just to see if what I remembered... Mm what I had in my mind, you know, the sails flapping around and the, you know, the guys just working yeah. as musicians and the way they communicated with mm. each other. I sort of remembered it, but I was carrying those memories. So there were things that I thought, wow, I didn't realise I'd shot that. <laughs> and there were other things I went, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's even better than I remembered. There's a wonderful sequence that you construct in the centre of this film, which is really to do with Garrett's dancing. <laughs> now, I, I must admit, I've never seen a live concert. I've seen, you know, the film clips here and there over the years. But this sequence where he dances, uh, you know, from a range of different performances is absolutely mesmerising. <laughs> it is just an extraordinary piece of film to watch. Yeah. What was it like to actually be around his, his energy, his kineticism in a way? Well, it was, it was the whole band. I mean, obviously, he's the focus. I mean, he just had an amazing gift with the audience. It's very genuine. It's very sincere. Yeah. Yeah. It's not... Like, oh, you know, we're popping up here and we're just going to play a few songs. When they went on stage, it, they put everything out there. The other thing that's interesting is that a lot of the issues then are the issues now. Mm. Not a lot yeah, has changed. Yeah, It's scary, really, the whole thing about, you know, nuclear weapons. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think you'll find anybody in Australia who's particularly interested in it, but it's interesting that all, you know, because the audiences in 84 and that, that era... The musicians, the stage crews, the management, the filmmakers like us, and all the audiences. We were all in our 20s and the audiences were in their teens and their 20s. Mm. And it was very much a youthful voice of protest about, about you know, in, in this particular case, about that issue. <laughs> Ray, thank you very much for coming in to talk Pleasure. to us. Pleasure. It's been terrific. Really good luck with the film. Mm, it thanks. Is. I've described it as a time warp and it absolutely <laughs> is. <laughs> Everything in the world could be going wrong, but you'd have this thing, you know, and you really loved it. Once we all get in a room, it's just like family. Just because it's family to me.